The ancient mega-metropolis of Guatemala, undoubtedly one of the most incredible and indeed one of the largest ancient ruins ever found on our planet. With a past population now believed to have been as many as 10 million people, many of the ancient ruins within the Guatemalan rainforest, long thought and academically argued to have been separate settlements, have now been discovered to have once been all part of the same super-settlement. However, although incredible discoveries have been made at the sites, in particular the incredible site of Tikal, including the ancient plaque depicting a seeming cataclysm, have all been found at the site. Yet what was discovered most recently is no less incredible and may also depict a war between these differing concentrations of people within its many ancient settlements. A giant frieze, or frise if you will, 8 meters wide and 2 meters tall, has been found within an ancient pyramid long hidden, buried within the rainforest, found along the exterior of a multi-roomed rectangular building within a 20 meter high pyramid. It was created in a style now long attributed to the Maya. The carving depicts human figures in a seemingly mythological setting, suggesting it may depict deified rulers. It displays three human figures wearing elaborate bird headdresses and jade jewels seating cross-legged and appearing above the head of a mountain spirit known as a wits. A cartouche on the headdress contains glyphs which were used to identify individuals depicted by name. Yet, alas, only the central figure's name is still legible, with an inscription saying Ochchan Yopat, meaning the storm god enters the sky. Two feathered serpents are also shown emerging from a mountain, with a spirit below the main character forming an arch with their bodies. Much of the building in which the frieze was found still remains encased under ancient rubble, yet this has seemingly aided in the preservation of the incredible artwork, with the carving still possessing its paint, reds, blues, greens, and yellows, all still existing. Francisco Estrada Belli, director of the Holmu Archaeological Project, made the initial discovery. Quote, this is a unique find. It is a beautiful work of art, and it tells us so much about the function and meaning of the building, which is what we were looking for. End quote. Thanks to the artwork and the message it conveys, archaeologists now believe it is evidence suggesting that the rulers of the region were once embroiled in a political clash of the Titans between the kings of Kanul, the Snake Kingdom, and the kings of Takal. And although we now know that these settlements, and indeed the depictions of these different apparent clans, were all connected, it could be indicative of the ultimate reason for the demise of this once great civilization. Are we looking at the only artwork ever discovered throughout Guatemala which sheds light on the demise of the mega-metropolis? We find the evidence to suggest so highly compelling. We have, in the past, explored the incredible discovery of the mythological animal sculptures of Persepolis, now known as the Lamassu. We detailed the difficulty involved in transporting just a single example of one to London a mere century ago. Yet, it would seem a similar situation seemingly also occurred at the ancient site of Amethyst, one in which the French quietly endured and restrictively documented. Located east of Agio Tychonis, next to Limassol in southern Cyprus, strategically commanding a stunning view of the surrounding Mediterranean landscape. The main acropolis of Amethyst, sitting just out of reach of the tourist track, atop the hill above. This location served also as an additional natural fortification for the site and its ancient observatory. Impressive discoveries have been made at the ruin, including ancient basins, vases, and various other utensils used by past inhabitants of varying eras. Atop the hill were two giant vases decorating the entrance to the main temple, one once dedicated to the god of love Aphrodite, each of which being 1.85 meters tall and weighing an immense 14 tons each. One of which being stolen by the French, specifically architect Edmond de Thoit, during the Ottoman occupation of Cyprus, supposedly given permission to take it away to his country. 
It now rests in the Louvre Museum in Paris. His documentation of this ordeal, we feel, is a revealing insight into the clear prohibition from exposing the astonishing capabilities of ancient civilizational capability. He reservedly wrote of the ordeal of getting it back to Paris in his diary. Quote, Our last day was dedicated to Amethyst, the only sanctuary of Aphrodite that we visited. There, we found two huge stone vases, 3.4 meters in diameter. I could not figure out the amount that was buried in the ground, and only a measure of the artifact which was sticking out. I thought if I managed to get it out of there and to convey it into the sea, it will be my biggest achievement. I will begin to study the ways and mechanisms needed to achieve this and to have it transferred. This will create a big impression in the Louvre." End quote. Who made these vases, or indeed the Acropolis itself? They were clearly astonishing vases, having existed to this day and beyond, and along with their sheer weight, we undoubtedly find them highly compelling. Osaka Castle one of the most important historical structures in Japan, having played a defining role in unifying Japan during the 16th centuries. It is a structure whose enigmatic characteristics we have covered in the past. The main tower of Osaka Castle, situated on a plot of land roughly one square kilometer in diameter, is built atop two raised platforms, supported by sheer walls of cut rock created using a technique called burdock piling. With some of these wall faces, also containing compelling precision ancient stonework, a feature we initially focused on in our previous video. However, there also exists other intriguing anomalies within the grounds of the castle, a series of stoneworks of gigantic proportions. Enormous walls, which many of you may not be aware of, rarely shared by academia. These sections were created with polygonal masonry techniques a method of advanced block building unexplained, subsequently lost to the eons. Due to their unexplained nature, these hidden features, we believe, are clear evidence of an original structure, far outdating the modern castle and indeed attested historical accounts. Yet what is undoubtedly the most striking characteristic of these surviving barriers is their size. Many of the surviving blocks, each of a unique shape, were once masterfully placed, seemingly effortlessly atop one another, with incredible precision, stones stretching far into the hundreds of tons. This astonishing feat of ancient engineering, utilizing blocks of gargantuan sizes, is also present at many other ancient sites throughout the world. It is not only indicative of a lost, advanced, highly capable civilization, but the question as to how they managed to cut, move, and eventually place such enormous weighted stones with such precision remains a baffling mystery yet to be unraveled. Furthermore, there not only exists astonishingly huge polygonal masonry within the grounds, but there also still exists mysterious carved stones in and around the grounds of Osaka Castle. Perplexing megalithic stones, unquestionably carved for a past purpose, which possibly, due to their immense size, are the sole surviving remnants of other ancient features, now nearly all but eroded away. As such, their past function is now unknown. Yet regardless of these unanswered questions, we maintain a hypothesis that like the many other astonishing ancient ruins found on differing continents, for example, Baalbek, the Great Pyramids, Sacsayhuaman, Qulap, etc., that due to these sites' characteristics, specifically the immense size of the stonework involved in their original construction, and thus their once impenetrable nature, were utilized by a later civilization, and Osaka Castle being no exception, built upon a foundation far older than modern academia would ever willingly admit to. The fact that no modern explanation exists pertaining to how these gigantic megaliths came to be placed where they are found today, in addition to an absent understanding or explanation as to how polygonal masonry was completed, 
especially with such enormous quarried stones, we feel is strong evidence to support our posit that the foundations of these ancient structures are far older than their current dating. Foundations which were almost definitely the work of a past highly capable civilization responsible for all the other as yet unexplainable ancient wonders found around the globe. The question is, who were these ancient builders? How did they move such massive stones? Did they utilize technologies reminiscent of modern-day lifting equipment? Were all of these ancient structures built by the same governing force, with the slight variations present from location to location, only as a result of the different cultures who were responsible for the actual undertaking? Was this knowledge of highly advanced ancient building techniques shared worldwide? If this is the case, it is a strong indicator that most of what academia continues to peddle as a complete timeline of man is vastly inaccurate and missing vast chapters of past development. Where did this highly advanced group go? Why are there so many quarries and indeed unfinished ancient megaliths found all over the world? spanning as far as the notoriously remote island of Easter, all seemingly abandoned abruptly. Did this civilization fall victim to cataclysm? Or perhaps their fate was far more transcendental? Regardless of these unanswered questions regarding their final destination, we feel Osaka Castle is undoubtedly yet another example of extraordinary ancient feats of prehistoric engineering by a group we are yet to fully understand, and as such, is undoubtedly highly compelling. In our most recent video, we covered the astonishing, still existing, unexplainable fortification designs and other inexplicable architectural features which can still be found within nearly every district of modern-day Italy. We covered polygonal walls, multi-ton lintels still bridging ancient archways resulting in the conclusion that much of modern-day Italy rests upon a pre-Diluvian foundation, stone relics from an era within history that has been hidden from the majority of the world for several centuries. However, thanks to modern technology and the power of communication in which it has provided, photographic studies, past investigators' research available, and a resulting far-reaching exposure of this overwhelming evidence across the globe all at the click of a button. The evidence we continue to share not only contradicts modern academic theories regarding the origins of such structures, but thanks to the ability to collect and compile this information digitally through the medium of computers, certain individuals with an acute sensory ability have not only been able to share volumes of noticed anomalies that for many years were overlooked, but have linked these factors together through characteristics and as such, have come to a conclusion that the evidence to suggest a past highly capable civilization once flourished here on our planet is now overwhelming. A civilization that at some point within antiquity possibly came to an untimely demise due to cataclysm or transcended to a location or indeed realm we are yet to discover. Master stonemasons, once creating incredible polygonal structures, not only built with no mortar, but were capable of withstanding considerable onslaught, either from invading parties or natural disaster. A testament to this being that many still stand as proud today as when they were first built. A civilization that throughout our last few videos, initially aided by other compassionate, good-intentioned antiquarians, have been linking, thanks to their decision to construct such monuments with unique stylized block designs, possibly cast using as yet undiscovered advanced ancient technology, or indeed carved with as yet undiscovered precision stone cutting tools, which we have used to begin to identify this now lost civilization's work, ancient as yet unexplained ruins the world over, with this compelling complement of evidential factors supportive of our postulation of a past worldwide dominance. And although we personally hypothesize that the only logical culprit which matches our continued discoveries of their dominant existence, and indeed advanced nature, being that of the Atlanteans, 
this premise at this moment in time is not the most pressing factor regarding our research. Indeed, at this moment in time, it is vital that we continue to compile a solid thesis which will eventually, inevitably, make any academics claim as to a denial of their past existence inexcusable. Ancient stone relics, found in nearly every country on nearly every continent on Earth, with our next area of focus being that of the gigantic Cyclopean ruin, which can be found within modern-day Bosnia. Known as De Orson, these ruins are not only a virtual match to ancient ruins we recently covered within Italy, but also as a number of alternative researchers have concluded, such as modern investigator Richard Cassero, Giuseppe Lugli, a past pioneering documenter of these sites, and indeed ourselves, are in fact some of the oldest foundations to be found on Earth, seemingly predating the more complex polygonal techniques witnessed elsewhere Although still possessing precision placement, it is of more uniformly shaped blocks. Predictably, however, academia has been forced, due to currently attested paradigm, to attribute these ruins to the Illyrian tribe, a group of people placed at the turn of the Bronze to Iron Age. Yet how this primitively equipped group accomplished such feats, quarrying, moving, and placing multi-ton blocks precisely atop one another is an explanation which is conveniently absent from academia's long and detailed description of the archaeological discoveries which have been permitted, collected, and subsequently displayed. De Orson was discovered in 1891, and not surprisingly, it has never been fully investigated archaeologically. Located on Gradina and Banye in Osanishi village, De Orson was once an immense and undoubtedly intimidating stone fortification, which we believe already stood at the site, leading to this group re-inhabiting it rather than building it, undoubtedly giving them a considerable advantage over rival tribes within the area, providing a practically impenetrable barrier, a sanctuary, allowing them to flourish, reuse like so many other ancient unexplained sites we have covered, and put forth the same posit for this being the main reason many of the ancient civilizations we now know well – the Romans, Incas, Egyptians, etc. – lasted so long, providing academia with so much archaeological detail, which they have in turn used to claim such structures were the work of these clans. This claim always absent any satisfactory explanatory description as to how these cultures went about constructing such sites. It does, however, give a rather revealing insight into where many of their rapid technological developments arose from. Ingenious survival solutions, not invented, but rather inspired, or more accurately, copied, from the remnants of the civilizations originally responsible for such builds, developments they would have full access to. The town of De Orson, we hypothesize, was embraced by this tribe, and as such, now displays many archaeological features of a Hellenistic city. They predictably developed a high degree of culture and civilization. Yet, intriguingly, within the district, there also still exists fragments of what were once human statues, all around 2 meters in height. Yet all permitted archaeological artifacts are conveniently dated from the 2nd and 4th century BC housed in the National Museum of Bosnia, clearly in an attempt to strengthen a fallacy regarding this astonishing Cyclopean ruin's origins. Who built De Orson? How did they move such enormous stones placed with such precision? Why are there remnants of statues of individuals we would perceive in the modern day as giants? It is clearly an intriguing sight, rarely shared academically, and not even fully archaeologically explored. A place we find, undoubtedly, highly compelling.